In this video, I will show you how to implement wait logic in your talent job. Right. So there could be two scenarios in which you may have to wait until a particular um, you know, event to happen before you proceed your talent job execution. Right. So the scenario one is uh, based on the input file. So let's say if you are waiting for uh, some other application or tool to generate an input file, then your talent job should actually wait until that is generated. Otherwise, you know, the talent job would fail and uh, you will have a uh, you know, hard time. So instead of that, uh, you can actually implement wait logic so that it will keep on waiting at certain interval and uh, it will kickstart the talent job when it is arrived. Right. So this is scenario one. And in the scenario two, uh, there could be um, the same application or external tool that may be, uh, you know, updating certain uh, flag on a database table. So if you want to make use of uh, wait logic on a database table, um, that is also possible in Talon uh, for which I am going to show you how to implement such a feature in which a table will have a flag and based on the flag value, um, the Talon job execution will start. Here is a sample job on Talon Studio in which it is reading a stocks.csv file from input stocks final folder right if you look at uh, my local folder it is empty right i am uh, making this purposefully so that uh, we can simulate uh, this scenario so let's go ahead and run the job and see um, it should fail with the file not found exception right so in order to uh, avoid this scenario we have a component called um, t wait for file so if you look at uh, some of the you know properties here on the components tab the first one is the uh, time in between iterations. So it's going to try multiple times, right? So for each such uh, iteration, uh, it will ask us to define the number of seconds it has to wait. So if you give like 10 seconds, it will wait for 10 seconds before attempting uh, to go and check on the folder. Right. So that is one thing. And if this looping, if you want it to be uh, indefinite, then you can just keep it uh, as is. Otherwise, you can just specify some higher value so that it will try for 100 times with the 10 minutes interval. Okay, and the directory to scan is very straightforward. Uh, we will just point it to uh, this final folder, right? And the file mask uh, we should be looking for is stocks.csv. So this is our input file, right? Uh, we can uh, give this file mask. And if there are any subfolders, you can make a check mark on this. And if it is a case sensitive on Linux and all, uh, you can you know make use of this. And here is the important point: uh, trigger action when a file is created. So there are several actions here when the file is deleted, updated, or you know created, whatever it is, uh, it is going to um, whether to continue the loop or exit out of the loop. So in our case, what we want is as soon as the file is created in this particular folder, uh, it has to exit the loop. Otherwise, it will just keep on looping and you will never pass the control back to our main job. Right. So once this configuration is done, uh, you can actually go ahead and connect it using uh, on sub job OK onto the input of the uh, stocks job. Right. So let's go ahead and run this particular job. So right now, if you see, it is uh, continuously waiting for the file. It is not passing the control, right? And it is going to uh, try 100 times with an interval of 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and uh, put the actual file, uh, which is there in the other folder. I'm going to copy that fold, uh, file into this final. Okay, I copied and I'm back on the talent studio. And if you really wait for 10 seconds, uh, it will uh, get triggered. See, 10 seconds are over. It has triggered and it has read the data. For the second scenario, I'll be making use of uh, one ETL control table here. It contains an app ID, parent uh, process, and then the status of a particular parent. Right. So uh, in this scenario, we will be waiting until an entry is made into this ETL control before we start our talent job. Right. So currently uh, this table is empty and let's go back uh, to talent and build that job. So for that, uh, I'll be pulling one pre job step here just to make this uh, SQL server connection. I will choose DB connection and uh, I will connect it. 
all right so in order to make this to wait uh, like how we have seen in the file so there is a component called t wait for sql data so this is our component uh, this will make use of an existing connection so make sure you uh, create one connection and then connect it so once you look at this uh, there are a couple of options here um, the very first one is wait for each iteration so it will wait for certain seconds before it retries to check the database content so let us give 10 seconds here so that we can uh, clearly see the difference so the next option here is uh, the max iteration so if you want um, this wait wait to happen only like let's say 100 times you can just give 100 times if you just leave it empty it will just infinitely you know wait for uh, that database entry to happen so for this demo uh, i'll just put 100 and uh, we have chosen this uh, connection uh, db connection and we will specify the table name here so this will trigger an action when the row count is greater than zero so this means uh, when a new insert is done uh, for the table only when uh, the row count is greater than zero then only it will trigger and also then um, by default you will see the continue loop you can just uh, say exit loop so what this will do whenever an entry is made uh, in ETL control and the record count is greater than zero it will exit the loop and pass on the control to uh, the main uh, job so let's connect it using um, you know on sub job ok so only when this is complete uh, this sub job will be uh, triggered otherwise it will just keep on waiting here okay so this is one way um, I will show you another way uh, wherein you can actually specify the um, filter conditions like where clause you can uh, specify a certain where clause so we will look at that option uh, in a minute so let's go ahead and run this job okay so this is now running and as you can see the T wait for SQL data it's still you know waiting in um, loop and it has not passed any control so the uh, sub job is not started it so let's go back to our database table and we will insert one record into ETL control table and uh, this flow should start in next a uh, few seconds yeah so this is how um, your uh, wait for SQL data works uh, based on a uh, certain uh, you know time interval so next uh, as a next step uh, what we will do is we will um, add a where clause so instead of blindly saying uh, row count is greater than zero uh, what we will do is we'll supply one where clause here and here we'll specify uh, app underscore status equals ready so let's go ahead and check how this works let's run this job okay so the job is running and it is keep on waiting now what we will go what we will do is we'll go back to this uh, table so currently the ETL control has one entry with the app status as wait whereas what we have given is um, you know we are making this to wait until the status becomes ready right the status becomes ready only when uh, the status is ready this will, sub job will be triggered so let's go ahead and make an update here okay so now that is done and uh, let's see yeah so the control is now passed and the sub job is executed so this is how you will make uh, your you know talent job to wait until um, you know you have certain app application status to proceed and execute right uh, so likewise uh, there is another option here in uh, t wait sql uh, instead of just specifying the where clause you can actually write the entire uh, sql statement so that it will always um, you know get this uh, sql executed and keep on wait and then you pass it controls to the sub job so this is the second method of uh, waiting for sql data in the first um, you know scenario we have seen waiting for a file arrival and second scenario we have uh, implemented wait for SQL data.